what's going on guys welcome back to another video and today i'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool shockwave effect inside of after effects for this tutorial all you need is sapphire so if you have the sapphire plugins you should be good you could probably get away without using them but it definitely makes the effect just look much better with having sapphire plugins but there's probably some other ways to do it without having it but you'll just have to experiment with that so here's what the effect looks like if i play it back you can see that it's a shockwave and it starts out small like this and then just expands really quick on the in this clip it was on the beat drop and then we just rotoscope marshmallow in this case out of the shockwave so the shockwave is in the background and then he's in the foreground right here so that's basically what i'm going to be showing you guys how to do in this tutorial so what you first want to do is grab your clip here i already um, timer mapped it so speeds up slows down like that just something like this pretty simple clip is all you need for this effect all right so with your clip selected you want to go to the rotor brush tool up here and then double click on your layer and it should just bring up another window right here where you can do your rotoscoping at so i want to start at the first frame so all the way here at the start and then just select your subject and the rotoscope will try its best to kind of figure out what you're trying to highlight and also before you kind of do everything make sure your version is on 2.0 and your quality is on best if you don't have the option for 2.0 then it's probably because you're on an older after effects version like the uh 2000 like 19 or 18 i think only has like the 1.0 but the 2020 should have the 2.0 so go ahead and use that because it's going to make the process look a lot better and i'm just going to select this body right here and then holding alt is how you remove stuff so if i hold alt it will, rem it will remove it and then if you just like normally select it is the two uh, tools you need to know for this rotoscope all right so i just finished rotoscoping this first frame and you can see over here i did a pretty good job but there's some rough edges around here so you can just go up to the feather and just feather it out quite a bit and that's pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect something like this should be fine so now i'm just gonna go ahead in the frame one and i see his hand moves down like that that should be good and it's doing a pretty good job i don't really have to do too much So once you've selected your subject and you're ready to move on, you want to freeze your uh, rotor brush or else it'll like keep like propagating or propagating or whatever. And that's not what you want because it'll just keep trying to redo your rotor brush while you're editing. So now that it's frozen, you should be good. You can just exit out of that. Go back into your main composition here. And what you want to do is copy and then paste your layer above this one. And with the bottom one, you can just delete your rotor brush. So now you can see that we have these two layers here. I'm actually going to duplicate this bottom one without the rotor brush one more time. So we have this top layer with the rotor brush, one without it, and another one without it. Now with this middle clip selected, we're going to add all the effects to it. This is where we're going to have the shockwave um, come in right here. So the first thing we're going to do is grab CC mr mercury right here drag it into your middle clip you can see it has this weird bubble kind of effect going on here which is fine just you gotta tweak a few settings so let's do like 20 for velocity birth rate 20 and then we might have to change these i'm just trying to get like a basic kind of look right now and it's going to be different for each footage that you do this effect on all right so i finished tweaking all these settings i have the velocity at 16.5 birth rate at 50 and then i left everything else at the same um so when i play this back you can see it just it's nothing like special it's just on the screen so what i'm gonna do is grab this other effect called optics and then bring it on top of this mercury and then I'm going to mess with the field of view, maybe like have it 
start out super high. You can see it shrinking it like this. So it's up to you where you want it to start at. I'll have it start like that. Keyframe it, your field of view. And then you want to go ahead and then keyframe it again at zero. And then if you go into your keyframes right here, you can see that it starts out small and expands like that. I'm going to easy ease them. F9 on your keyboard when you have them highlighted. Make sure you're in your value graph and then mess with these. That's a little too strong. I don't want it to go too crazy. There we go. That's not bad. Definitely could look better if you're not rushing it and you're just taking your time trying to mess with all these different settings here. The main thing is just like right here, the CC Mercury. It's messing with like the velocity and all that. That's probably the biggest thing in this, but yeah. So just kind of mess with that until you get a look that you're looking for. Now the next thing we want to do is add our S underscore distort. This is where you want your Sapphire plugins. So if you don't have this, I'm not sure what you would do for this step, but you could try using a different effect or do your own thing with that. So I'm going to create the amount 0 0.08. Zero eight, I think looks pretty good. And then the lens, I'm going to do like 200. So now we have this like chroma effect on it. Oh, and also you want to make the steps higher. So like the 20. There we go. All right. So now you want to add your glow and I'm going to be using S underscore Z glow for this and just drag it in there. It's another Sapphire plugin. And we're just going to be tweaking a few settings. So the color, I'm going to change it to like a light blue. Something like this. And then just close that. We can change like the threshold and everything. You can see that's like super bright. We'll just have it something like that. And then you can change the brightness here. So what we're going to do is keyframe that start at zero and then when it gets like here we'll do two we can easy ease that also by doing f9 and then there we go we have that shockwave effect and you can add like in uh some zooms or whatever if you want so if i add a new layer select these clips and then just parent them this adjustment layer I'll name it zoom have it start super zoomed in here and then have that clip end at a hundred percent should be good select these keyframes here and then just easy ease them go into your graph editor have it start out strong and then slowly ease out. There we go. That's pretty much all it is. And then you can also turn on motion blur for that layer as well. So you have motion blur while zooming in or zooming out in this case. And then boom. That's pretty much how you do it. You can add some other effects to Marshmallow, this top layer right here. So another effect we can add is Warp Chroma. It's another Sapphire plugin. Put that onto his layer, which is the top one right here. Change the steps to maybe 20 and then change the Z distance to like nine, 0 0.97. You can see he kind of is having that like RGB effect around him. But that's up to you. You can add that or not. That's with it off and then that's with it on. So it's a little subtle effect, but 
that does make it look pretty cool all right thank you guys for watching this video um make sure to subscribe leave a like down below and also comment what you guys want to see next in the future i'm going to be making a few more tutorials i've just been quite busy with school and then other editing projects so i haven't had as much time as i wanted to be able to make these uh tutorials for you guys but i'll try my best to make some more in the future and yeah with that being said peace out